The Small Business Show, episode 233, for Wednesday, July 24th, 2019. Welcome back, everybody. I figured I'd say that instead of greetings, you know, because I like changes yeah, it up. Welcome a little back. Bit. Yeah, it's where the small Good. business show, the show by for and about yeah. small business. Uh, sponsors for this episode include textexpander.com slash podcast and go.co slash SBS. Now you've already gone there because you know that's how it works. You go to those URLs, you learn about that thing that you, you've helped us. Uh, we'll tell you in a couple minutes why you've gone to those URLs, but that's how you've helped us. And uh, for now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm good. Craziness. Good. You know, but yeah. that, like extra craziness. I have more travel this summer than I've ever than I've had in a while. Like just lots of little trips. Most of them are actually business trips. I've got a couple of, you know, things for in fact, when this show airs, I will be in Montreal with uh with my family just doing some nice. vacationing. Yeah, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. But that's um, cool. Man, like I am, I am so thankful I had the foresight to turn down several theater shows that were offered to me for this summer because wow. I could have fit them in, you know, with like, I'll get a sub for this weekend that I have to be away here and there or whatever, but it would have killed me business wise. Like I, already it's killing me business wise. Like, you know, just staying on top of everything, knowing that I have all this travel and yep. projects and, you know, I mean, all this stuff that normally goes on. So it's um, the, the power of saying no, right? The power. It's true, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we did. I think we did a show on it some, yeah. at some point. But yeah, the problem yeah, is, you, cool. you know, I, I suffer. I st- like terrible FOMO where yeah, I, I know it's like, I like, in fact, this, this coming weekend, I'm going to max stock X expo, uh, which is a show that I love. It's really hard to put a business benefit on it. Like that, that pays for the cost of the show. Like there is a business benefit, but really it's a show for consumers and other podcasters. There's about 150 people that go. It's like camp. We all just like to see each other. It a lot of these people are my listeners for you know sure. for my Mac Geek Gab podcast, but let's face it, you know there's far more than 150 listeners to that show. So yeah, uh, you know, well, so it's a it's a branding show, right? It and it's, is the brand is your you, you know the that's brand, a, it's, right. Yeah. And and yeah. so I get to go and see these people, and I love seeing these people, but I can it's hard to justify, especially when it's cutting into like family vacation time or whatever. But I I did have one theater show that I was doing, and what's the the, the public spin on it is, which is true, actually, a bunch of the actors got sick. It, it really was people. They were worried about people getting sick and lots of stuff happening. So we actually canceled the first weekend of this oh. and it opened up my schedule. And it, but at the whole time I was like, dang it, I'm going to miss out on Max Talk. But I, re- I committed to this theater thing and it's the right thing for me to do. Like, that's the right decision. And then as soon as I got the email that they were canceling the, the first weekend, it was like. Yeah. Oh, great. I can go to Max Stock. I did. I hadn't canceled my hotel yet. I was good to go. So booked my flights and off I went. So we're off awesome. I will go. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, yeah, that's good. So today in the show, I want to talk about a few things that I'm, I'm really passionate about. One of the or the main topic is uh, after the sale happens and the opportunities that you have there uh, to build loyalty, encourage repeat buyers. I think that Many, if not most companies kind of fall down on it. I have some examples of people that do it great, but opportunities in communicating with your customer after the sale, shipping and packaging, handling returns, handling warranty requests. Most of those are either overlooked or people put obstacles in front of them to try to slow down returns, maybe we know warranty issues. And I, I want to flip the script, if you will, and turn them into opportunities to make your customers love you even more. I love it. I love it. The yep. first thing I, I want to do is I want to talk about something else that I love, which is text expander at text dot com slash podcast. Yes, I know. I don't like to put words in your mouth, but I believe with this, I could very <laughs> easily say we love this. Uh, yep. It's true. So text expander is one of the most important efficiency tools that you can have for your business, right? It, oftentimes efficiency and accuracy are at odds with each other. Text expander makes them partners and friends because 
There's all those things that you need to send out via email, right? Or, or any other written form, text or whatever you have, letters perhaps. But those customer service responses, like we're going to talk about here in a minute, those uh, frequently asked questions, those replies to sales pitches, right? You want to make sure that you get these out in a timely fashion and that they are perfectly accurate and exactly what you want to deliver. So what do you do when somebody asks you, hey, what can you tell me about, you know, the uh, ad rates for this show or whatever? It's like, well, I go into my email and I look for the last time I sent that to somebody and I copy it and I paste it and then I have to tweak it and I got to remove all those stupid like reply headers and all that stuff and and format it right and make sure, oh, did I get the person's name right? No, 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 no. This is what you use Text Expander for. You put that snippet into Text Expander and then it stays there and you format it perfectly right there. If you want to have someone's name in it, you can actually leave a little spot for a variable. It will prompt you every time you use it. Put the person's name in or it can pull it from different places. It's really smart. And that way you get accuracy and efficiency all at once because all you got to do to invoke it is click the mouse or type a little shortcut, whichever way you like to do it. And boom, it's right there. Even better, you can share these snippets with your team. So everybody has them up to date at all times. If you got one person on your team that's really good at writing and editing, really editing is even more important. Editing is the most important part of writing. So find somebody that's good at editing, let them be the manager of these snippets. And now everybody's got a perfectly edited response. It's awesome. So go check it out. Textexpander.com slash podcast. That's where you go. You'll select small business show from the list. We would like that's, that's how we think it should work. And you know, that way they know we sent you, but just go there. Textexpander.com slash podcast. Our thanks to text expander and smile for sponsoring this episode. All right, man. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, you know, when you make the sale that I always think of it, that's half the battle. Uh, because I think ha- how you handle things after the sale, especially, you know, nowadays, cause it, it, it's so competitive. You have a chance to really make a, a impact on your customer after they buy from you um, and developing customer loyalty and encouraging them to come back and, and buy more. And, you know, I want to talk about these four areas of after sales situations. Uh, and I, I think a lot of them are looked at as kind of necessary evils or just some automation thing that we put in place and boom, it's done um, or a headache to deal with. And so what I want to try to do is convince you that they're, actually hidden opportunities to impress your customer and to connect with them on an entirely different level than they're used to or in a different way. They're going to pay attention to you more if you change things up a bit. All right. Um, So let's talk about communication after the sale. You know, think about when you buy something and we're going to talk about, you know, e-commerce. That's my, you know, wheelhouse. And and, uh, so, but it could be the same, a physical store if you're sending out an email, but think about the email confirmations you get when you buy a product most of them are, you know, really boring. Hey, here's your invoice. Hey, thank you for your sale. We're going to ship it quick. And you know, that's about it. Not very exciting. Sure. And I I would, I would argue that if you, the emails you send out, don't put a smile on your customer's face. You're really missing an opportunity that they need to, uh, you know, some little tidbit of joy shows up in your email box and it's different than the 50 other companies that they, that they're getting emails from that, that stands out. Uh, And I think it's a great opportunity in the thank you for your order email. So, you know, just think about your customer. They're really excited. They bought your product. They ordered your service. They're looking forward to getting it. They're looking forward to solving a problem with it. Make sure that your email confirmation continues that excitement. You know, you may have to use a couple extra exclamation points. We talked about pacing uh, here a, a couple of shows ago. And, you know, you're going to assume, hey, this customer is excited to get my product. I'm excited that they brought it to them. How am I going to show them that in an email? And, you you know, you, you have to do that. Um, That's a great. And, and yeah, asking that question, how can we show you how excited we are? You're not here in front of us. So we yeah. can't 
smile and and you know have the whole team come and like applaud you shake so, your hand they yeah. say thank you get that get that visual with your face with your smile like you're right you have to convey it you gotta find a way to convey it and and as soon as you have that in your brain now go back and look at the last 15 receipts you got from different companies and find what you don't like and then fix yeah. that in yours. That's right. Or if you find one that made you laugh or smile, that's copy the one to, it. to copy yeah. it. <laughs> You're yeah. like, hey, I'll, I'll change this up, you know. It, it's, and then in that email, you know, humor is great. I mean, for for years, uh, well, the, the last few companies that we had to have like the whole dreaded phone tree when you call in and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I hate those. So I, I put my voice on them and I answered and I said, you know, I know – I hate these things as much as you do. And so I'm going to try to make it as painless as possible, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever. And I, and I, I had a whole script that I went through trying to interject a little uh, humanity into this automated thing, a little humor. And, you know, a week didn't go by where a customer would be like, that was great. I love that. You know, and, and when you picked up a customer service uh, call that's been on hold for five minutes, you know, that's the attitude you want the customer to have. I love that, uh, you know, phone voicemail tree message, not, Hey, I'm really upset that you've kept me on hold for five minutes. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and so using humor is really important. And if you're not the funniest person, find somebody that is, right. you know, one of your, right. your kids, your friends, your partner, your employees, you know, put somebody in it. That's got a little edgy uh, humor to it. Um, so in that email, you know, you want to also explain how this process works when what's happening now, you know, is it, is it just boom, you're going to some big faceless warehouse and we're going to ship your thing out and now we're too busy for you. Now we're trying to find the next customer. No, it show the cycle, you know, manage their expectations, make it interesting, you know, uh, make it up, make a thing. Our little robots are crawling on the warehouse now to pick up your item, whatever, make it a story, make it part of your, your company story and make it, interesting to read and put a smile on their face. They'll remember it. One piece of advice. If you're going to get cute with something like that, right? Like putting the robots on the floor. If you're going to have little elements like that, put it on your calendar to change it every six months, maybe every year, but certainly not any longer than that because it's, it's cute. It's fine, but it does get old, especially when people realize it's repetitive. Now, maybe you could also automate having, you know, put a dozen of them in and have it randomly choose one for every order is something like that, you know, or at least change it up semi regularly so that people don't just get bored of that, you know, and if you've got longtime customers, they'll be really excited three years from now when you go back and say, let's use the robots again. You know, like, oh, people are like, oh, the robots are back. Like that can be an, actually an exciting thing, but you don't want it to get stale. And yeah, and, and those kind of cutesy things get stale faster than anything else. Yeah. And I think that. It, the tools that are available now for personalization and automation, you can create 50 of those emails, you know, yeah. and, and write 50 different little snippets. And there's a company called Clavio, uh, K-L-A-V-I-Y-O, Clavio.com, that uh, I've just had lunch with a guy that runs a business that actually the founders have been on the show. And uh, they were talking about how some of the things this, this new software does. And I mean, it was just massive personalization and I, I was totally impressed with it, but that's a really good point uh, is to, to change things up. Yeah. Just keep it, keep it fresh, keep it yep. whatever. Yep. Yep. That's yep. right. And then the next part, you know, the next communication you're going to have with them is that you've shipped their product or there's a tech on the way or whatever. You know, this is, again, awesome news. It's a big deal that you shipped it out quickly, that you're responding quickly to their service call, whatever. Uh, talk it up. Continue the excitement, you know. And give a lot of information. Hey, here's your tracking number, of course. Here's when we expect it to show up. Uh, and again, a little humor goes a long way. Those those are those are great. And then the last one I think that uh, I've seen more lately, which is I think great, is an email that your product or has arrived. And even I used uh, uh, yourmechanic.com last yep. couple weeks ago, and you know they're telling me I got a, a text 
when the tech was on the on the way with tracking from their phone, which was great. And then when they rolled into my driveway, I got another text that said, hey, your technician is here. And I was able to walk out and, hey, I see this guy sitting there. So that your item or your the you know person, however, whatever business you're in has arrived is awesome. Uh, and in that, you know, is there, are there any tips they need to know? Uh, you know, hey, you just got the product and, you know, here's some unboxing videos. Here's the top 10 FAQ questions that we get with this product. You know, you may want to look at it before you open it up and rip it all apart or something like that. Uh, giving them that information, I think, is is really powerful. Yeah, that's yeah, you're right. There's more and more of that happening where you get like the your your box arrived or your box is arriving tomorrow. Yeah, Here's something you should know before you stab it with a knife, yep. you know, that's like, right. That, that's right. That, that kind of thing. Yeah, super valuable. I like it. Yeah. And I, like and I think that, you know, what you're trying to, to do uh, is continue the conversation, you know, and, and to continue to convey to your customer their value. And most of it can be automated. You know, you don't, ha- nobody's in there typing these emails out. You just set this stuff up and, and, and let it go. Don't miss the opportunity to uh, increase that connectivity that you make with your customer. You know, I, I'm a huge fan. I'm, I'm involved heavily in a, in a social commerce business now, and it's, all about tremendous personalization, you know, and I, and I always tell them advising some people in, in that space. And I'm like, Hey, if you don't want to use your own photo, go pick a stock photo. <laughs> I don't care, but have matter. a picture, yeah. have a picture of yourself. And we're going to talk more about that in the, in the next section, um, which I'm really passionate about is, which is shipping and packaging. Oh yeah. Do you, you're the master of that. I, 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 well, I will say, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we've shipped, you know, in, in the last, you know, 25 plus years that I've been doing this stuff, you know, even just in the Apple space, millions, literally millions of boxes, um, either parts or Macs or, you know, you well, name I'm going to hold you. I'm going to hold you back yes. there because because I want to talk about this. And yep. the first thing I want to do is thank our sponsor, Go.co. You know, one of the most pivotal decisions you make when launching your new business or your new project or your new whatever it is, is your name and your website URL. And then you go through that disappointing process of checking if the domain name for this business that you've got in mind it's already taken or whatever. Like that part is really frustrating and time consuming. Don't worry, you can be like us and get the name you really, really want because you can choose a domain name like us that ends in .co. You know, businessshow.co. Here we are. And it's the ideal way to get online because it's short. Only two characters makes it super easy to remember. You all remember it. Right. You know, it's businessshow.co. We say email us at feedback at businessshow.co. You already know how easy it is to remember because we've trained you just because that's how we work here. You know, they've got so many people registered, but there's a better chance of getting the exact domain name you want compared to a dot com. And dot co offers startup goodies, some freebies and perks and resources and other great tools. But what they also offer For you, because you're a small business show at businessshow.co listener, if you go to go.co slash SBS today, you can register your .co domain for just $5. Plus, you get three months of their website builder and hosting services for free. So visit go.co slash SBS, register your .co domain for just five bucks, get three months of their website builder and hosting service for free. And our thanks to go.co for sponsoring this episode. Shannon, I want you to tell me about packaging because it is, <laughs> folks, it is yes. time to go to school. Here we are. Well, <laughs> you know, we, we've had some great guests on the show uh, for, you know, talking about packaging and, uh, and logistics. And, and especially now, I mean, if you're in any kind of business that's, that's shipping products, the, the box is really the first tangible, uh, you know, physical experience that your customer is going to have with you. So y- you really need to make your, your box should be awesome. I mean, if it shows up and it's just this brown box with the UPS label on it. Uh, okay, great. And they kind of, but 
what a missed opportunity, you know, and can you afford a custom box that that's printed? Uh, maybe, maybe not. If you can't afford a custom box, what about, a, a you know, some awesome stickers to make that box look more custom? You know, stickers are inexpensive. Uh, you know, can you ship a unique looking box? Can it be in a different shape? Can you do, you know, make yourself stand out? You know, there was a, uh, a guy I love to follow, Seth Godin, oh, yeah. and he wrote a book many years ago called The Purple Cow. And when you ordered that book, it came up, it, it arrived to you in a purple milk carton. And that was the box they shipped in it. It was awesome. And it got all kinds of press because of it. And everybody posting that stuff. So, um, Spend some time with your box. I, I will tell you with, with tech restore, we wanted, you know, this was, it was my second company that was involved in logistics and, you know, laptops and electronics back and forth overnight all over the country. Um, and we had convinced uh, DHL at the time and they were expanding in the U S to put our box in, in every van in the country. And so we wanted this really special box. And so uh, we, we had this box, you know, made and it was this big laptop box, but it was bright yellow. Just, I mean, you could not miss it. And it was, you know, had these kind of caution tapes, you know, graphics on it that said urgent shipment. And on the back of the box, uh, we had all kinds of information. You know, one of the big things that we loved was the company that we worked with was all run that made the box was run on solar. So, you know, we would have uh, a big thing, you know, this box was made by the sun and, and then just, just kind of specific people love to read that kind of stuff. And we would get tons of, of comments and people would see that yellow box all over and it worked great for us. It wasn't cheap, but it, you remember it, <laughs> you know, that's awesome. Um, yeah. 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 So if, if you can do that and maybe, like I said, maybe you can't do the tooling and the, and then print, you know, thousands of boxes at one time, but. I know you can afford a sticker, go to sticker giant or sticker monster. There's a bunch of inexpensive that that market's been turned into a commodity, like everything else. Uh, y- you can have stickers created that are, that are really cool. And maybe you need to put multiple ones on them, you know, put them on there. Sure. Um, and, and I think that's great. You know, another company that does a great job with their box is new egg and they have a, a series of boxes and the printing on the outside of the box has phrases on it. Like, you know, here comes your awesome you know, the excitements inside the box. I mean, they, they do some really great phrases that are funny and you can see search for new egg box online and you'll see people posting pictures of it on Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Don't miss the opportunity for the outside of your box to make a good impression when it's getting left on the doorstep or handled by whoever. Yeah. Really important. That's really, really, really smart. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, you know, your customer has the box and they're going to open it up. You know, you're the first look again, you, you're going to make another impression. What's inside the box? A bunch of, you know, crappy, non-recyclable peanuts. That's not a good first look. You know, is this, are they, because people get a box, they kind of shake it around a little bit. Is your product banging around inside there? That's bad too. Uh, I don't care if it's, you know, a brick, they don't want to hear that. Um, and, you know, what are they going to look at? And this is where I come back to that photo. A photograph, a printed photo is one of the most powerful ways to connect with another human if you can't be there. And, you know, with our social commerce business and our, our handbag business, you know, we, I include a picture of my wife and I, and we're standing right there. Thank you. You know, we're telling him that on this little insert that I print, you know, I print them on my printer and I print a hundred or 200 at a time. And, and it, it's, it's cheap and easy. And it's a very good way to do it. If you don't want to put your picture on it, put it, how about a photo of all your employees saying, thank you. You can certainly make them stand in for a photo, right? Right. Uh, And and, and, hey guys, we're all, we're all going to, you know, they'll do it. Or, you know, again, go pick some stock photos out, you know, go to Shutterstock or wherever you get your, your photos and just use that. Nobody cares. Nobody knows. Um, No, you could put a picture of a dog and say, this is, you know, Timmy, our company mascot saying, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That'll bring a smile to people's face. And it is different because I'm not getting a, a picture. You know, most boxes you get don't have, they have just a quick printed little invoice out. Don't miss the opportunity, especially for a small business. This is your niche. This is your way to stand out from all the big guys that don't put the time and effort into it. Uh, 
in, you know, to putting something in there. And, that should be the first thing they see when they open that box. You know, I will challenge everyone that's not in a physical business like me. Right. We you know, we're in the digital business and all we sell is digital things. And over the years, I've come up with different ideas that I haven't implemented. It's just those crazy, you know, like we talked about last week, the why can't we? Uh, yeah. And and the reason the answer to to for all of these ideas is because we haven't yet. Like that's the only there's no good excuse. Um, but, you know, I thought about uh, when most of our business was in web ads and we could deliver people um there uh, you know like we we would send people screenshots of like your oh, yeah, ads sure. up here you go and i thought man why don't we print that nicely and send it to them in a fedex envelope right it'll That's cost us whatever idea. 10 bucks or something yeah. whatever yeah. the campaign's worth way more than that and i guarantee you we are the only people doing that like like guaranteed yep. because no one's even going to think about it let alone actually do it we thought about it we still didn't do it um but, you know, thinking about what you just said, you know, we have this bird, we have this, this parrot, yeah. Hector, Hector, Hector D. Bird, Hector D. Bird. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. She, um, she actually has a long history in the Mac uh, software market. She was with Ambrosia software for a while and now she lives with us and, and Ambrosia started it as, you know, they're her, she was their ma mascot. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and so we could have a picture of Hector and, and we could even say Hector says thank you. And then in parentheses, we yep. could put actually Hector doesn't say thank you. She says some things that really aren't family friendly. But <laughs> what she means is thank you. Right. Like you could be funny about yeah. it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, <laughs> absolutely. and no one would forget it. People would ask about Hector. They would go follow her yep. on Twitter and I'll put the link yep. in the show notes so you it's folks can follow idea. her. But. Yeah. So I'm thinking now challenging, I challenge our listeners. So, you know, challenging myself, how do we do this with the podcast business? Like what can we send new clients to make them, to, to make them remember us? Right. Like, yeah. It, and really Different. the answer is anything. It doesn't matter because yep. no one else is sending them stuff. Yeah. Like we could great. just send them a hat and a postcard yeah. from Hector saying, thank you. Here's a hat or here's yep. a whatever. Yep. yep. Yeah. And so th the other thing I like to do with that, that thank you and that photo to get them to hang on to it is I put a coupon code right below that. So it says, Hey, keep me because this is good for whatever, 10 bucks off your next order. Or in the case, uh, you know, let's say you wanted to sign up for your newsletter. So with, with tech restore, what we did is said, Hey, if you go sign up here, we will double your warranty. So if you bought a refurbished product and it had a 90 day warranty, go sign up for our newsletter, <clears throat> excuse me, sign up for our newsletter and we'll give you, uh, you know, six months instead of three months. So some kind of incentive to get them, you're trying to get them to hold on to that and not just toss it. Right. And I mean, you know, in a, in a perfect world, they'd stick it on their fridge with a magnet you're and right. every day they go to get something to eat. They'd see me look at that. Though. Oh, I, I need to go buy some more stuff from these guys. Right. Uh, and that throwing is, in is the what warranty, like that's really yeah. smart because that, that doesn't actually cost you anything. If somebody, it, it if somebody you called you five months into a three month warranty, because you're the customer service maniac, I know you are, 99 times out of 100, you would warranty that product just like they bought you're it You're going to fix it anyway. That's yes. Right. You are going to fix it. And and you might as well just do it up front, you know, and, and get, yeah. the, get them to sign up. So that insert is really a great opportunity. And I saw something, one company, who was it that did this? Um well, I have to think about it. It was a Mac or an iPhone, iOS company. Yep. They had a little card inside uh, their little insert. And it, it said two things, which I was really impressed with. The first thing it said is, you know, are if you're happy, please go here and leave us a review. And then you flip the other side of the little card up and it's like, it had an unhappy face, unhappy, please go here so we can fix it. Yeah. So you're encouraging them to leave a positive review, but trying to stop them from going online and complaining because you're like, hey, we're here to we're here to fix that problem. I thought that was a really nice idea. That's really smart. Yeah, I like that. I yeah. like that. Uh, the next thing that I'm I'm really passionate about is returns. You know, returns are a fact of life and you need to embrace them rather than putting up obstacles to avoid them. Uh, you need to, uh, you know, make it easy, make it quick. Um, if you make it easy, make the process, uh, and I use the word fun in quotations, yeah. but, you know, make yeah. it, make it easy, quick, quick. it's just going to happen. If you do that and you issue refunds quickly, 
It's going to get customers buying more, buying again, and it's actually going to lower the number of returns as a percentage of your sales. It absolutely works. And oh, I believe I, I would, that because if, yeah, if it, you, if someone returns something and it's a, it's a process, it, yep. you know, and I, I, I put emphasis on that word, uh, they are not going to buy from you again. So certainly for that customer, the ratio of, you know, purchases to returns is going to stay unfavorable. But if you make it super easy, then there's a much, I believe that, that there's a much better yeah, chance it, that they'll buy something and then your ratio goes up by definition. It, yeah, and and yeah. even doing the, uh, it took me a long time to get out to get to embrace this, but even doing free returns where you include the label, the return label, that in my, ex- my personal experience does not increase the number of returns you get. It actually, as a percentage of your sales, your returns would go down because you you offering a level of confidence to the customer. It's like, hey, we know you're going to love this thing, but if you don't, okay, great. And then we tell them when we do the return processing, keep that coupon. Don't don't include that back inside the box. Oh. Just hang on to that oh. because when you're ready to come back, I want to give you that discount. Right. So again, you're you're just encouraging this relationship. You're you're taking the transactional nature out of it. Right. It, you're because you want to have this connection with those well, people. That's it. You are by giving man. I never thought about it this way, but by offering free returns it. Well, let me let me reverse this by not offering free returns, by essentially charging the customer for what it takes to ship it back. You are saying, yep. OK, I see this relationship as over and I'm trying it, to get out none. of it. Uh, minimize. With, yep. Yeah. Minimize your cost to me. Whereas if you say, oh, yeah, no, we'll take it. You are communicating. You are still valuable to me. Of course. I care of about course. you. Yep. Let's let, I, I get that this particular thing didn't work out. I don't care about that. I care about That's right. you. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. I want you to come back, save the coupon, you know, that kind of thing. So, right. again, you you've spun this whole return process on their head. Now, you know, there are people that are going to abuse things and you can kind of Always. but you can push those people out and. And I have a comment about those type of people, too. But as as we wind things down, the same goes for warranties. It should not be painful to get warranty support. Look at your process, remove those obstacles, make it quick, automate it and personalize it at the same time. And you'll build that customer loyalty because when people talk, what you want them to say is, oh, I didn't like that, but man, they were great. They took it right back. They never questioned me. And they gave me a coupon off on my next order for another product that I'd like. That's a success right there. And you know, for returns and warranties, don't let the outliers decide your policies or set your procedures. These are the people that we all, the customers that we all have, right? They're, yeah. they're the, the 1% that are just a nightmare and cause lots of grief in your customer service department and all that kind of stuff. But you, those people are going to happen, but you don't want to treat all your customers like your worst customer. You want to treat them like your best customer. Really yes. important. Oh, don't set yeah. policy and procedure based on your worst customer. That's you, you got it backwards. You know, how do we treat our absolute best customer? That's how everybody gets treated. And then, you know, you put some little policies and procedures in place to eliminate and minimize those outlier one percenters so they don't disrupt everything like that. It, this rough really works because, you know, I, I can tell you from experience, if you treat these situations right, returns, warranties, your packaging, how you communicate, you, you again, you build that connection with customers. I mean, with Tech Restore, we would have, you know, quotes from customers, you know, I'm in love with a company called Tech Restore. And that's because we focused on this kind of connection because, yeah. yes, we were repairing a laptop, but we're really in that customer service uh, business and that kind of thing. And that's how you know you're doing it right when you get those kind of comments. And that that's all sense. I have to say about that yeah. topic. <laughs> no, that makes sense, man. I like it. It's good. That's great. But yeah. I'd love to hear, you know, your stories and what you do for your business to stand out, you know, and that's at feedback at business show dot co. Um, that's feedback at business show dot co. I think and you said feedback go, at business show dot co. I did. That's you got awesome. it. <laughs> but before we go, I want to come back. We started a new segment segment last week uh, called small business therapy, where Dave and I, Talk about our businesses because unbeknownst to you, 
oftentimes we, when we call each other up or get online and connect to do, to record the show, we spend the first 15, 20 minutes talking about what's going on in our business. Now we're going to do it here each week. So you can kind of get an inside glimpse of what's going on with us. And yeah. Dave, I think you're up this week. What's going on with your businesses right now? I am. Well, we've got one. I mean, there's lots going on, but I'll focus on one <laughs> yeah, thing <laughs> in the interest of, of efficiency. Um, at Mac Observer, we uh, there were two things that I wanted to do this year. One is leveraging, like getting more value for us out of mailing lists. And we're starting to do that. We're not we're certainly not at the end of that, but but we've opened that door and that's going fine. Uh, we can talk about that sometime. But but the thing I sure. want to talk about today is is the other thing. And that's video. We really for the past several years, but arguably never in our history, have we had a good video content strategy. Okay. Uh, we've had some good video content at times, but nothing regular. And so it was on the list. And really, I thought, I, you know, we're not experts at this, which is why we don't have this. So we're going to need to hire somebody that is an expert and bring them into the team. And as often uh, happens somebody on the team, like, you know, serendipity, you start thinking about something, you start being uh, trying to, you know, focus on it. And then you find somebody on the team that has some interest. And that's what happened. Charlotte Henry, one of nice. our writers. Yep. She has an interest. Now what she, she has an interest in it. She is a, I mean, she's a fantastic journalist. So that part's easy. Uh, she has done television before. So she gets, you know, that part of it, but, the whole concept of web video in terms of promotion is the part where, you know, where we don't we still don't have any internal experience with it. I see. Sure. Right? Sure. You know, she knows how to produce the video and create it and all of that, which is great. You know, like that's also necessary. But we are struggling with you know, how do we position it? You know, for, for lack of a better term, and maybe it's exactly the right term, the SEO side of video, right? Oh, yeah. How do you position your content? How do you pitch it? What's the right length? What's the right, you, you know, do you use keywords? Like how do you focus so that people searching on YouTube will find these things and how do you promote and all of that stuff. And so it's been, it's, you know, we've got these videos coming up regularly now. I mean, we, we only started this uh, six weeks ago or something. So it's been uh, it's you know, it's been it's been a process. Right. Sure. So, uh, yeah. That's great. It, but it's you know, it's it's this the 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 stumbling block of, OK, now how do we get people to see these videos? Like that's right, the, right. that's the question. Yeah. And I love the concept. OK, we're going to start this new thing. And then but now we have to how do we now we need to know, figure it out to find it. Yeah. 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 No, that's really cool. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're if you're listening to this and you have any experience in uh, positioning, you know, videos and uh, uh, online or YouTube, you know, feedback at businessshow.co. Share your share your tips. We'd love yes, to hear please. it. Please, I'd love to hear it. And if you've truly got some expertise, you know, I might even hire you. So there you yeah. go. Yeah. There yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. That's yep. good. That's yep. great. Well, awesome. Well. Uh, Thanks for sharing that. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, you can give us a review at businessshow.co slash review. We would love to hear from you. That's a huge way to help us out and to help us grow the show. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, you know what? We've got one review that I think I've got right here in the queue that I can read as we nice. are uh, as we are exiting today. And uh, this review from... Uh, Printer Dave from Canada says a must for any small business owner. The small Business Show is hands down one of my favorite podcasts out there. I learn so much from the guys. And if you own a small business, do yourself a favor and subscribe. I also find that just by listening, I'm even more motivated and excited to work on my own business. Thank you, Dave. So this review helps nice. us on so many levels, right? We like th just reading what you said. Yep. It is awesome. We also get to share it with everybody. So that's awesome. And then having reviews really helps. You know, we just talked about getting exposure for our videos at Mac Observer. Well, we want exposure for this podcast, too. And Apple's algorithms pay attention to how many reviews we get. And then they start to highlight shows that are getting some traction there and actually have listeners that are paying attention. So 
yeah businessshow.co slash reviews we'd love to uh we'd love is that to have reviews you. with uh with an s yes or it's okay. reviews without an s i've got it configured ah, both ways way. yeah nice. of course businessshow.co slash reviews i yeah, love it that's yeah, great yeah, yeah yeah so cool yeah all right well that's what we got for today thanks to our sponsors textexpander.com slash podcast go.co slash sbs thanks to all of you thanks to printer dave from canada see you next time